Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. Can you all remember the very first email address you had? I think most likely it would have been provided by Hotmail. Some of you are so old school that you still have a Hotmail account. <laughs> it was on April 1st, 2004, that Gmail had started. At that time, Google was offering a gigabyte for each account. And for those who had other email addresses, this was an impossibility. How can you be given a gigabyte of content for an email address? Now, fast forward 20 years. Gmail is now offering 15 gigabytes for free. My LifeSaver email address came in in 2007, and I was under this 15 gigabyte limit until this year. So now I pay for 100 gigabytes really because of you. You should give me 75 cents a month <laughs> for all of the emails and data you take from me. <laughs> And I share all of this because people thought from whatever server to Gmail, this is impossible. So much of our journey we thought was impossible, but now we are feeling this is possible. To become more accepting, adaptable, to study every verse of Bhagavad Gita, this sentiment of impossible, rethink this. Impossible is a defense mechanism of the ego. In chapter two, verse seven, Prince Arjuna uses a potent word, shadhi, which means guide. A few verses later, Chapter 2, verse 11, Shri Krishna begins guiding. The guidance is na anushochati. Do not be sorrowful. Shared in positive language, be joyful. Until Chapter 2, verse 11, there are 57 verses where it is mostly Prince Arjuna planning out freeze and flight. Then in one verse, Sri Krishna shares, fight because this is your path to freedom. From Dharma to Brahma. Since chapter 2, verse 11, we have listened directly from Sri Krishna 578 verses. Thus far, 578 verses that are commenting on the one verse that is stating, Be joyful. We only have 64 verses left. That is less than 
of the entire Bhagavad Gita. I'm sharing all of this with you because I've been emphasizing in this final chapter that is a summary that relates to asi or jnana, how much Sri Krishna loves you. If you remember this, you will follow being joyful. I'm going to give you some frameworks to think about how this love is being expressed to us. God, inherent to God, an expression of God is grace. Grace gets expressed more as guidance. Guidance gets expressed more as being granular. Details. Specific. You see that change from chapter 3 to chapter 18, how Sri Krishna is being more specific about how to renounce and surrender. Another way to understand this framework. God is infinity, which gets expressed as divinity, which gets expressed as our map, which gets expressed as our guide. The trust triangle. It's almost like these are blocks. That is a structure, but these blocks themselves are infinity, and from these blocks a structure is cut. This is us accessing the inaccessible. Shared in another way. God or infinity. Through Grace or divinity, we come to feel the message. Through guidance or map, we come to feel the message is real. Through granular or guide, we come to feel the message is person. That's why in this chapter, Sri Krishna keeps referencing himself. He's not referencing consciousness or the rishis. He's referencing himself. Sharing this in one more way, and please understand why I'm sharing this. If you understand love, then you will follow. But if you don't understand this love, this final chapter of a subjective science this will still be objective for us. God, infinity, if we take this in a more visual sense, this gets expressed as the sun. The sun expresses as rays. The rays are best used through panels, solar panels. So if you feel these first verses of the Bhagavad Gita, today we're going to take up 15, are repetitive. What Sri Krishna is doing is bringing out this panel so we can make use of all that's being shared. Has everyone understood what I've invested 10 minutes into so far? So are you going to follow? In verse 14, Sri Krishna is sharing the path from doing to being. This path, so many of us have already experienced through the highest vocation or our silence retreats, where I try to teach about the six koshas or layers starting from our lifestyle or experiences then going through the equipments and then finally to uncover de-layer the ego that is the same path from doing to being 
the ego is that which separates. And then what does it do? It identifies. The ego takes infinity, makes it into many finites, and starts to identify with some of these finites. Like this is my body and that's your body. And this separating, uh, identifying, in this chapter it is described as doing. And I had mentioned with doing comes struggling. If you are evolving, you're shifting from doing to being, and that means you're struggling less. In contrast, the spirit is being. I used the word presence yesterday. It is in the presence that the ego equipment experiences can function. Shared in another way, the spirit is existence. It is on account of existence that other entities exist, like the layers or the kosha. trying to share this in a more visceral way. If you could have a dialogue with electricity, and you asked electricity, why are you doing the furnace? Why are you doing the hot water tank? Why are you doing the laptop? Electricity would say, you are struggling with moha. <laughs> I am not doing, I am being. You are taking this being and manipulating it into doing furnace, tank, laptop. Verse 14 and now 15 is trying to guide a seeker from being more shallow to being more deep. Reflect on doing from the outside in. From the body, to the breath, to the mind intellect, that was the third factor, to the ego, to the spirit. Verse 15. Sharira vang mano biryat, karma prarabhate naraha. Nyayam va viparitam va panchete tasya hetavaha. Joy. This verse is bringing us to the conclusion of what was stated in the previous verse. Sharira, what you do with the body. Vak, what you do with your mouth. Manaha, what you do with your mind. In other words, actions, words, and thoughts. I will be in Portland from May 16th to the 19th. The workshop I'm facilitating is on love thyself and how people who love themselves, they discipline their actions, words, and thoughts. Karma prarabhate naraha. A human acts through their body, speech, and mind. What they do through their body is almost gross. What they do through their speech is almost subtle. And what they do through their mind is almost causal. Whenever you come across these three words, gross, subtle, causal, there has to be that which is beyond. These are expressions. There has to be the existence from which these expressions come. So Sri Krishna is sharing in this first line, this is all relative. You may be highly identified and immersed in your actions, words, and thoughts, but it's still relative. Nyayam va, good, Viparitam va, bad. Humans, 
express through these three equipments or channels. And what they do is good, what they do is bad. For us at this point, viparitam should not exist. Following wrongness should not even be an option because we understand Sri Krishna's love, especially in this chapter, where rightness has been made more specific as yajna tapadana. We took the kids to an arcade on Monday. When I grew up, my cousins owned an arcade. My childhood was awesome. <laughs> I got to go to an arcade to spend time with my cousins. <laughs> and I really enjoyed playing pinball. Now, for anyone who is visualizing this, sometimes that ball gets stuck in this triangle, correct? It hits this, then hits that, then bounces there, then goes there, and it just stays in that. In this point of Meaningful Mornings, at this point of Bhagavad Gita, your body, your mouth, your mind should be like that ball that is just bouncing around amongst yajna tapadana. It should never come out of that bouncing around. Panchete tasya hetavaha. It is these five factors that cause humans to express in the wrong or right way, for us, only the right way. The first four factors are doing, the fifth factor is being. Ujjaswami Chinmayananda summarizes these two verses. Here is the final reflection. Please listen carefully. All these enumerations and explanations of the last two stanzas add up to the conclusion that the sense of agency of the self is an illusion. That fifth factor that is the spirit, it is being, all else is doing. Those are mutually exclusive. You are not the doer, you are the beer. From inspiration to application, your application yesterday was to track from the outside in the, these five factors on how to do, why to do. How many of you reflected on this? You tracked it? I feel that if you are following through with this, you are feeling more that you are the subject as in the spirit, and so you're becoming more objective. If you're becoming a more objective person, it's because you're coming to understand you are the subject. Your application for this morning, five mornings from now, that is April 8th, we will begin reading Bhagavad Gita's chapter 18, the Pasha or commentary by Puja Swami Chinmayananda, I hope all of you have signed up a morning to read. That is your application. Shan, 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 be he, be joy.